Um, we want to uh, keep our worship leader in prayer, Die. She's not feeling well. That's why you didn't see her today. She was uh, uh, scheduled to be here today, but she is not feeling well. So we're praying for her in Jesus' name. But thank the Lord that we have a team that can step in when someone is sick. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So thank you guys for joining in today. We want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I pray that you're going to have a great um, fellowship with some family or some friends. And um, if you can, invite someone that has no one here. Uh, maybe their family have passed away or they live here in a city on their own and they have nowhere to go. Uh, that's why you get to know one another and see what their situations are because we want to be the church. We don't want to just uh, do the talk, but we want to walk the walk. And, and so Thanksgiving time uh, can be a lonely time for some people who have no family. And that's why we did our fast in November because the enemy starts attacking in this holiday season as um, they come out of Halloween. And that's why the suicide rate is so high during the holidays. Uh, suicide is, is sky high during the holidays because of the enemy and, and sending out that spirit of suicide, loneliness, anxiety. So we want to be the church and love on people. And, and so if it's possible, and you know some family members that have nowhere to go or, or someone from the church that has nowhere to go, then talk with them and say, hey, invite them over for a little time of fellowship. It will greatly impact them with the love of Jesus Christ. And that's how you put your faith in action. And believe me, God will bless what you have. You know, you might have a small turkey. Amen. But like the five loaves and, 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 and the fishes, God will multiply it to meet the needs as you uh, minister to the people of God. So you can never go wrong by blessing those in need. So we thank the Lord uh, for you guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, we've been just experiencing mighty uh, manifestations of the Spirit. And so today we want to just continue what God is doing as we continue in the book of Ephesians. Everyone say Ephesians. And it just happened to fall right in place, right in line with Thanksgiving. And today I want to talk about don't stop being thankful. Everyone say thankful. Don't stop being thankful. The holiday season of Thanksgiving is around the corner. It's this Thursday. And this is a time that our country has set aside to be thankful for all that we have. And as Christians, though, we give thanks to God for everything that he's given to us. Amen? Because we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But God has blessed us. I don't deserve the family that I have. God has blessed me with a tremendous family in Jesus' name. Amen? I know. I, I married up, you know. I got a beautiful wife with a beautiful family. Uh, that uh, is here in the ministry that helps this church, our, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-laws that help. And I know that God has blessed me with such a tremendous family that loves the Lord and is working to build this church to help out the kingdom of God so that we can reach more souls. And, and I know God has blessed me. It wasn't because of me. It was because of the Lord. And I know some of you have great wives, and you've married up too, guys. Amen. Amen, guys. Yeah, I know. Some of you, just look in the mirror, and you know you've married up. Amen. God has been so good to us. The job you have. A lot of us don't deserve that job. There's other people who are more qualified, who are better at doing what we do. But because God had favor on us, and when people saw us, they said, you know what, I don't know why I'm hiring you, because I got stacks of resumes. I've heard testimony. I've got stacks of resumes of people who have higher qualifications than you, that have better education than you, that look better on paper. But there's just something about you that... 
I just need to have you on my team. And they hire you because of the favor of God. And you need to be thankful for your job. Some of us, we curse our job out on Monday morning. Amen. We wake up, man, and, and we start cursing out our job. Man, why am I working? I hate the job. I hate my boss. I hate. But you know what? You need to be thankful because there's a hundred other people who would love to take your job. Love to have what you have. Love to have your family. Love to have your wife. Love to have your husband. Because they're alone. So you need to be thankful that God has given to you what he's given to you. And not just in this season, but every day of the year. Thanksgiving is not just a one-time thing for a man or woman of God. It's every day, 365. It's every day, 24-7. I give thanks to the Lord. You might be single right now, but guess what? I give thanks to God for my singleness, that I can do some things for God that I couldn't do maybe if I was married. But the time will come if your desire is to have a mate, you just have your faith in God, and your time will come. Your time will come, Ruth. Your Boaz will come in. Boaz, your Ruth will come in. You just got to praise the Lord and work in the kingdom of God. And as you're working, that mate will come alongside of you and begin to work in the ministry with you. And then all of a sudden, you look to your left and your right and say, Woo! Look at that good-looking thing God made. Amen. Man, she looks so good, or he looks so handsome. And the reason why is because he's working in the ministry of God. He's not out there on the streets slanging. He's not there on the streets doing all these crazy stuff. She's not out there every night. She is serving God. She's in the house of the Lord when the doors are open. She's there in the house of God praying and seeking the Lord and working in the kingdom of God. That's the type of man or woman you want to be thankful for. And if you're not that type right now, guess what? You can change. Amen. Amen. There's still time. Why? Because you're still alive. Amen. You be that example. Work in the kingdom of God. And God will bless you. See, a lot of what we have, we don't deserve. But the grace and mercy and favor of God that is on us has placed us in a position of blessing. A lot of what we have, we don't deserve. If we got what we deserve, man, some of us would be totally messed up. I know I'd be jacked up if I got what I deserve. Because the Bible says I deserve hell. But grace says, you know what? Because I love you. And I have grace on you. I'm opening up the doors of heaven so that you can repent of your sins and be with me for all of eternity. And guess what? While you're here on this earth, I'm going to bless you too so that you can rejoice on this earth as you do the work that I've called you to do. See, some of you people, not, no, not here, but some of you people out there on Facebook land and, and, and YouTube land have the mentality, oh, yes, pastor, we will be blessed in heaven. Yes, we will, but guess what? We also going to be blessed here on this earth. You ain't got to wait to get to heaven to be blessed. God wants you blessed here on this earth. How can you talk about how good God is if all you're doing is complaining and suffering? That's not the Lord. That's the enemy. You got to bind that enemy. You got to stand up for one day, say, enemy, that's enough. I'm going into spiritual warfare. I've suffered too long. I've been in that spirit of poverty too long. I've been in that spirit of suicide, depression too long. And guess what? I ain't going to take it no more because the Bible says I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. There's blessing all over me because I'm a child of God. Some of you are ready to fight other people just by giving you a crazy look. You're like, what you looking at? But the devil stomps all over you. You're like, Ooh. 
Oh, the devil beat me. No, man, you step up to that devil. He said, guess what, devil? I ain't taking your mess anymore because I am anointed, appointed. I am a fire-breathing, tongue-talking, radically saved believer of God. And guess what? I got the five-fold ministry, and I'm going to knock you out because in the name of Jesus, I have the victory. Like that great theologian said, LL Cool J, mama said, knock you out. Amen. I don't know, by the laugh, I know some of you know about that great theologian. We can't be whips out in the street. We were tough when we come to church. We all whip. Oh, you got my son. Oh, no, man. You go and say, devil, you can't have my son. You can't have my daughter. They belong to the king. And guess what? We're going to throw down until you let him go. Because I got authority in Jesus Christ to take them back. Take her back. Stop being a wimpy Christian. That's why you got to go to a church that will build you up. And tell you who you are in Christ. Because this is a spiritual battle. This is spiritual warfare. The devil don't play. He ain't no punk either. He'll punk you out in a second. If you don't stand up. You know, that's what they used to tell us when we were kids, right? If a bully bullies you, hit him once. And if he don't go down, run. <laughs> but believe me, all you got to do is hit the devil once with the anointing of God and he's going down. He ain't coming back up. He's like, ah, oh, we don't want to mess with this one. This one knows who he is in Jesus. She knows who she is in Jesus. We'll come back later. We got to go pump some more iron. And that's where you study the word and say, come on back whenever you're ready for another beatdown. Just like you did in the streets. You got you to gotta tell the devil who's boss. We can't stop being thankful for God, to God for all his blessings. We got to be thankful all the time. Because it's so easy to get caught up in all the things that's going wrong in our lives that we forget about what is going right. You know, we can list 50 things that are going wrong, and we have 100 things that are going right, but all we concentrate is on these things that are going wrong. We got to learn to say, you know what, yeah, everything's not great, but guess what? I ain't where I used to be. I used to be here. I used to be this. I used to be that. But I ain't that no more by the grace of God. I am this. I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am blessed beyond measure. Some of you a year ago had never thought you would be in church. And look, here you are. Some of you a year ago might have been even locked up. And look, here you are. In the house of God, celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And just like you got your physical freedom, you got to get your spiritual freedom. Because it's, it's worse to be locked up spiritually than to be locked up physically. It's time to be thankful. Some of us, we got to say, no matter what I've been through, the Lord has been good to me. No matter what I've been through. And some of us, we might have been through hell and high water in 2022. But guess what? The Lord is still good. I might have been in the surgery. I might have had cancer. I might have had diabetes. But guess what? The Lord is still good to me. He's good. Not because of what he has done, but because God is good. Doesn't matter my circumstances, God is still good. Rejoice and be thankful that God is a good God. No matter what situation you find yourself in, God is still good. God is still good because there's... Millions of people that will trade their situation with you that are 
in the grave right now, and they said, if I would only get another chance because they're suffering in hell. I heard that gospel. I didn't believe it back then, but now I know it's real. And they would give anything to change spots with you to say, God is good. So while you still have breath in your lungs, we sang that song, the breath in my lungs. As long as I have breath in my lungs, I'm going to say, God is good, period. Not God is good because he has done. Not God is good because I have. Not God is good because this. God is good, period. That's where I stand with my God. That's my thankfulness to the Lord. Some of us have been through some mess, but through it all, the Lord has been faithful, and he's never left you. See, maybe there's some people that entered 2022 with you that are no longer standing by your side. Some of you might have some wounds in you because they knifed you. Not from the back, but they knifed you in the front. But guess what? You're still standing. You're still standing. You're still alive. You're still making it. You're still in church. You're still serving God. You still got things to be thankful for. We're thankful in the good times and in the bad. Because God is in control no matter what. No matter what, my God is in control. He has everything in order. There's nothing that happens in your life and my life that takes God by surprise. He, he's never sat back and said, ooh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Now I got to do something. No, he knows everything. He is God. He's good in the good time and the bad time. See, the enemy will lie to you and tell you that God has left you and he's forsaken you. But the truth is that Jesus sticks closer to you than a brother, the word of God says. He's there. You know, some of you who's lived a little bit remember that old poem of the footprints in the sand. Where it's a poem, per se, and... And it talks about this person complaining to God and saying, I look in the sand, and when I was hurting, all I saw was one set of footprints. Where were you, God? And God answers that person and says, those footprints you saw, they weren't yours. They were mine when I carried you during the hard times. I've been there with you through thick and thin, through good and bad. I've been there, and I've carried you when you couldn't walk anymore. And some of you, 2022 has been rough. No one's saying it's been easy. But guess what? God has always been there. Never believe the lie of the enemy that says God left you. He's never left you. He loves you. He loved you so much, he died on the cross before you was even born. Imagine that. Laying down your life for future, say, for yourself, for future grandchildren that you never met. You say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to lay my life down right now for my great, 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 great grandchildren that I've never seen. I'm going to take the bullet now so that they don't have to. Man, you'd be like, man, I, I don't even know that. I don't even know if they're going to even be alive. How could I do that? <laughs> That's what God did for us, Jesus Christ on the cross. He died for you before you were even born. Thousands of years ago. Because he knew one day you would need him. And so he says, I love them this much. And I'm thankful that I can do this for them. And he bled on the cross. And he died. So that we could have forgiveness and we could have freedom in Jesus' name. The Bible says when you're weak, Jesus is strong. He will lift you up when you fall down. When you're down, he's going to lift you up. He's there. Even when your physical eyes and your physical ears are telling you something different, believe the word of the Lord that all his promises are yes 
and amen in Christ Jesus. Every promise that's written in the word of God is a promise for you. You just claim it. You find the promise that you need at this moment, and you say, I claim this promise. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, I'm more than a conqueror because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I have the victory in Jesus' name. Whatever promise, I am healed by his stripes. Whatever your promise that you need, oh, I am blessed financially in Jesus' name. Find that promise that you need, that you're suffering through right now, and make it your promise and say, I claim this promise for me because the word of God says it is a yes and amen for those who love Christ Jesus. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 now. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. It says, do not cease, everyone say cease, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. See, Paul is telling the Ephesian church does he, that he doesn't stop thanking God for them. Paul says, man, I thank the Lord there's a church in the city of Ephesus. Man, you guys have been good to me. You guys bless me financially. You bless me in prayers. You bless me with the hand of fellowship. I don't go a day without being thankful for you and that church in Ephesus. See, thankfulness needs to be a way of life for us. We can't stop being thankful for those that God has placed around us. See, there are people who God has placed around you to help you. And you got to be thankful for them. God, I thank you for placing these people around me that support me, that lift me up, that will grab me and pull me up when I've fallen down, who won't let me give up on church, who won't let me give up on God. They'll call me. They'll come to my house, and they'll drag me to the church and say, no, you ain't going to give up. You're going to come to church. You're going to worship God. I'm going to be here for you. That's the type of friend that you need. That's the type of friend that you want. You don't want them friends to tell you, oh, come on, let's go get drunk, man. Oh, let's go get high. Let's go to the club. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. You need the type of friend that says, let's go to the throne room of God. Let's pray together. Let's seek the face of the Lord. Let's open up the windows of heaven and call on God. That's the type of friends you need around you. So that you can continue the walk that the Lord has given to you. Because this life is not easy. This is not an easy life, Christian life. That's why the Bible says you can't do it as a lone ranger. You can't walk the walk of Christianity alone. You will not make it. That's why those people says, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Guess what? You ain't going to last. You need brothers and sisters. You need the fellowship. That's why... The Bible says don't give up going to church like others have. Because you need the brothers and sisters. You encourage me when you come here every Sunday. I, I get a smile on my face to see every one of you. Because it brings encouragement to me that people are hungry for the truth. They don't want this watered-down, Mickey Mouse, Chuck E. Cheese type of gospel. They want the truth, unadulterated word of God that sets the captive free, that heals the sick, that saves the lost, that does the miracles. They want that uh, manifestations of the Spirit. So when you come, you bring encouragement. And when other people see you, you encourage them. Man, if so-and-so can make it, I can make it. Because I know, you know, I, I, I go to the gym not to um, get strong or lose weight, as you can tell. Amen. 
But I go to the gym so I can eat. Amen. I go to the gym so I can eat some cake and some donuts. <laughs> oh, that's Ellie. All right. I said, that's one of the family members. I can't see it, but I know that voice. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that go to the gym, look in the mirror, and start kissing my biceps and triceps. I start thinking about one donut, two donuts. <laughs> How many donuts I can eat every time I lift something? But when I go to the gym, I go to the Planet Fitness because it's cheap. Amen. I ain't going to lie, $10. You can't beat that. I wake up in the morning, like 5.30 in the morning. Ungodly hour. Amen. <laughs> and I go there. You know what encourages me when I go there? There's like a 75-year-old lady who goes there every day. And she's on the bike, or she's on that little treadmill, and she's running, man. She's pushing herself, you know, I mean, like, slow, but she's pushing herself. And every time I see her, I'm like, oh, yeah, she can do it. I, I can't get punked out by no 75-year-old. <laughs> so I go, one, and when she walks by, 30, 31. <laughs> so I can't have her punking me out. But she encourages me. I'm like, I look for her. Because when I see her, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do this. I can do this, man. And, and she encouraged me because I see her that at that age, she's still going to the gym. Now, if that can encourage me in the gym, how much more can you who come and begin to worship God when we stand and we worship the, the Lord no matter who's leading it, no matter who's playing. Because it's not about the music. It's not about the singers. It is about what's inside of you. Do you have a spirit of worship inside of you that you can worship God today in Jesus' name no matter what? That's what brings me encouragement. I see you worshiping. Man, that encourages me. So you need to be an encourager. Just raise your hand every now and then. It's okay. You can move a little bit, dance. It's okay. God's not going to get upset. He's not going to send a boat of lightning down on you. You got freedom in Jesus. Get loose, man. Don't be there like a stick and just worship the Lord. Move around, dance, jump, shout. Get excited. You serve a living God. You might not sing the greatest, but that's okay. Just sing from a corner. Amen. <laughs> You'll be okay. But we encourage one another when we come. See, We might not always agree with each other. We sometimes might get upset with one another. But if God has placed spiritual leaders around you, then be thankful for them. Be thankful for them. You may not always agree with what they say or what they believe outside of, of our doctrinal things, that, like Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. There's no, there's no room there to disagree. That's... That's the truth of, of, of the word of God. But there are other things that we might tend to disagree how we interpret a scripture, what we believe is holy or not holy. You know, there's some people who said, you know, going to the movies is of the devil. Okay. There's others that say, no, I can go to the movies. I have freedom. Okay. We can agree to disagree. And guess what? We still can be friends. Imagine that today in today's culture. We can disagree and yet still be friends. <coughs> Today's culture is like, if you disagree with me, you hate me. No, that's a lie of the devil. You might like a certain donut, and I like chocolate donuts. Amen. I'll still be your friend because I know. I especially invite you over, and I buy all chocolate donuts. So I know you won't eat any. <laughs> I'll be mine, precious donuts. No. 
<laughs> no, I'll buy you one at least. <laughs> we can agree to disagree. We don't have to agree to be friends. Because there are things that are not clearly stated in the word of God that you might have an opinion on. I might not have another opinion on, but that doesn't mean I hate you or it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just we disagree on this certain topic, and it's okay. It's okay. Just like my Baptist brothers, they may not believe that miracles still happen today, but guess what? I still love them. And guess what? When they're sick, some of them, they will come to me and say, hey, can you pray for me? All of a sudden, they believe. Amen. That's okay. I still love them. They're my brothers in the Lord. So we can agree to disagree and still love one another. We just don't disagree on the doctrinal topics like a salvation. Jesus Christ. The only way to heaven. There's no other way but through Jesus Christ. You can't get to heaven through Muhammad. You can't get through heaven by being a good person. You can't get to heaven by doing good things. That's not what gets you to heaven. The only thing that's going to get you to heaven is to have a personal relationship, repent of your sins, and ask Jesus Christ into your heart. He is the way, the truth, and the life. As long as we start there with that foundation, we can build from there. We can build from there. Now, if you don't believe in that, okay, now we have issues. You think there's other ways? Well, you're going to find out that there's not. There's only one way. But we can be friends. We can be friends. And we can be thankful for our leaders. We're not here to create robots. I'm not here to tell you, you got to believe everything I believe. And if you don't believe what I believe, you got to leave this church. That's not this type of church. There's freedom here. We have room. We have room to have disagreements. We have room to have our opinions on certain matters of the Bible that are not doctrinal. So make sure you get that clear. Not doctrinal. Things that are not doctrinal. So you can have your opinion, I can have my opinion, we can disagree, and guess what? We still can come to the same church, and guess what? We can even sit on the same side. (laughs) Because there's some people say, oh, you don't agree with me, you got to sit on the left side, I'll sit on the right side. I see you sitting on the right, I'll sit on the left. What kind of pettiness is that? You're my brother. You're my sister in the Lord. I love you. I love you. You are a child of God. Don't let petty disagreements cause you to fight. Let your spiritual leaders know how much you are thankful for them. You know what? I'm thankful that someone can challenge me on my beliefs. I love to be challenged. It it sharpens me. That's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So does one man sharpen another. I want you to ask me, why do you believe that? So we can go into the scriptures and and see why we believe what we believe. Because it's important to help one another out. To challenge one another in our beliefs. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you do it in love. Don't do it like you got this superior spirit and, and you're, you know, God, the Bible, and you are like right there. No, no, no. Don't be like that. Be open to learn. Don't just go into the challenge and say, it's just my way. I don't care what you say. No, be open to hear. Maybe you might change your mind for once. <laughs> I know that went over like a rat sandwich. You might change your mind. (laughs) See, a lot of y'all don't want to change your mind. You're like, no, I'm going down with the ship on this one. But we we change, you know. If you've been in church long enough and, 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 and legalistic church, you know that holiness has changed so much. Like I said before, back in the day, you couldn't have the, the devil square box in, in your um, house. Remember that? That's the devil. It's pumping in evil things into your house. And those are the same people now that have a TV in their house. Come on now. 
Be truthful. Shame the devil. There are people who said going to the movies was evil. Now they're at the movie theaters. Y'all acting like you haven't lived a little. Come on now. I'm not saying here to tell you you're wrong. If you want to have that opinion and that's your conviction, well, praise the Lord. You listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. If he convicts you in that, then praise God. That's your conviction. It's not my conviction. <laughs> it's okay to say amen. Your, your neighbor ain't going to punch you. <laughs> Y'all acting like, man, should I say it? I'm kind of afraid. I don't know. It's okay. I've been in church for a long time. I've seen it all. I've seen the things. I saw it in music when I was a young person. No lie. When I was a young person and I wanted to do this outreach and I wanted to bring in rap music, that's when Christian rap was just starting out. I had all the older pastors tell me that's devil music. Come on now. They say, oh, no, you can't. I say, well, then what's the difference between that, you're calling that devil music, because it sounds, you know, the rhythms are the same and stuff, but then you listen to Christian, you know, mariachi or Christian salsa, they sound the same too. What's the difference? They're like, oh, no, brother, this is godly. This is not. What in the devil is that? And I was, you know, about 22 years old at that time, just a few years back, 22 years old. <laughs> and if I wasn't strong in the Lord, guess what? That could have destroyed me. Here they are, men of God, pastors, calling the music I love that was worshiping God in a way that I love to worship God, because I love rap music. They said that was devil music. But now... It's sociably acceptable in the church. Because I remember, we, we used to have a rap group back in the day. <laughs> I, used to, I used to be in a rap group. <laughs> Threw up my fist and all. No, you ain't ready for that. <laughs> used to pop the lock, break the centipede, all that stuff. We had our Christian rap. I remember the first day we performed in a church. Half the senior citizens, they had to bring in the, those, um, those things. Clear! <laughs> they all passed out. They're like, ¿Qué es eso, hermano? Es más música del diablo. <laughs> For those non-Spanish speakers, they're saying, what is that, brother? That's devil music. Devil music. How are we going to allow that in the church? And that's how it went. I, I, and I still even remember this. I went to, when I went to Bible school, I went to a very conservative Bible school. There was probably about five Hispanics in the whole entire school of this Bible school. It was in Springfield, Missouri. It was pretty much, you know, all widows, you know. Uh, um, brothers and sisters who haven't been blessed with a little darker shade of colors <laughs> to make it sound nicer. <laughs> and my senior year there, <laughs> I had uh, my, my friends were from Puerto Rico. They were there. They were one of the fives <laughs> that, that were part, that were Hispanic at this Bible school about uh, almost 2,000 people. So we kind of all like hang out. And we all like had, you know, because we were like, man, this is totally different. When I ate the food in the cafeteria, I'm saying, what is this? Because <laughs> I was used to eating rice, beans, tortillas, you know, the good stuff. And I go in there and they're serving me goulash. And I'm like, what is a goulash? That sounds devil, man. I'm going to pray for it. Sounds like a bunch of ghouls and demons in there. I'm going to pray for that stuff. Goulash. What is a goulash? I learned a lot about Caucasian food there. Amen. Some of it is okay, but a lot of it, uh, you know, 
I like my, you know, I need some sazon, I need some goya, I need some, I need some flavor up in there, man. I can't be having this flavorless stuff. But anyways, I, I, I'm still trying to get over those hurts and pains, man. It's very emotional times during that cafeteria time. So um, I had a married couple, name was Salvador and Madeline Irizarri, straight from Puerto Rico, and you talk about serving the Lord and, and just going out on a risk. They didn't speak a lick of English when they first got here. And the Bible school was all English. Imagine that. And they learned English quickly. But they knew they had a calling of the Lord. And this Bible school was our prestige school of our assemblies of God. And so they wanted to go there. I mean, their teachers were phenomenal. And they trained you well. So they came, not knowing a lick of English. And so they were there, and they were in charge of the prison ministry. So they would go into the jails in, of Springfield, Missouri. That's where the school was located, in Springfield, Missouri. And, and they would preach the gospel. And so they had a service at our Bible school. Every day we had what we would call chapel. Uh, it was like a class from, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. We would have worship, a service, every day, Monday through Friday. We would have that. And, and so one of the times they do, they, they allow the different ministry to showcase what they do. So he told me, hey, Rob, man, they're going to showcase the prison ministry on this day. He says, could you write a rap and rap it? I'm like, you want me to rap in this church, <laughs> in the chapel? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be cool, man. I was like, I don't know, man. These people don't look like they're into rap. <laughs> they're like into southern gospel and that kind of music. And I don't think they're rappers. He's like, no, no, no. This is, man, this is the type of people we reach out to. So we want to show them what it's like. I said, all right, I'll do it. And so I, I got some, my cassettes and I made a mixtape. How many you remember mixtape? <laughs> Y'all young people don't even know what that is, mixtape. Where you had a, you know, I had a dual cassette player, so I was, I was making beats back then that way. That's the only way I could make my beats. So I made, I made some beats, wrote the rap. I did it for him. He was like, oh, yeah, man, that's sweet, man. Let's do it. Time came, and every chapel, they video record it, you know, so they can have it for, you know, for history. So they, they get there, it's time for me, they're like, and we have the prison, Hispanic prison ministry, they're going to uh, do a song and worship the Lord and share a little bit with what they do. So he went up there, he talked a little bit of how they go into the prisons and they share the gospel and people got saved and they're like, we want to do a song with you and you know, everybody was thinking, oh, you know, they're going to do some worship song or something. So I come out, you know. I come out crisscrossed out, man. You know, that was back when crisscross was good. I had my head on backwards, had my clothes, baggies on. They hit the music. Soon as that first beat hit, you should have saw everyone's face. <laughs> they were like, I get on there, I start wrapping it up, I finish the song, and then you know, you kind of get like that nervous. Courtesy clap. <laughs> and there, the guy comes up. That was the Hispanic prison ministry. Next ministry. So then at the end, the guy who runs the sound system in the video, among other people, but he was the first one. He comes to me and he says, brother, I've been in church a long time. <laughs> And I've never been offended like this with that type of music that you brought in here. And he said, and by the way, the, the video cameras, I guess they were saved and um, they didn't record you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, brother. God bless you. I still love you. 
And so they didn't record. And then later, you know, I had a few people say, man, I can't believe you did that. That's the first time ever anybody's rapped in here. Man, that was awesome. You know, that was about like five people. <laughs> a bunch of other people were offended. They, they called it jungle music. They, they were, I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you the truth. God's my witness. And you know what? I still told him, you know what, brother, sister, I still love you. I still love you. You might not agree with what I did. You might not agree with the style of music that I'm using. But guess what? This is a style that you're going to see. This is when it first started out that the young people are going to gravitate towards and it's going to minister to them and they're going to be touched. And, and so you're either going to have to get on board of what God is doing now or you're going to be stuck in a legalistic spirit. But guess what? I still love you like a brother and sister. I hugged them. I said, thank you for sharing your opinion with me. And I loved them. Did it hurt? Yes. You know, to experience that. To experience that in a Christian place. So know that, you know, racism and all that, it, it exists. We're, we're not people who put our head in the sand and say that doesn't exist in the church. It exists. But guess what? We are above that because we're children of the king. So even if you experience it, don't let it knock you off your square and say, well, I, man, them church people, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. Guess what? Everywhere you go, there's racists. You go to McDonald's, they might not like you. They'll give you attitude right there taking your order because they don't like you. Guess what? You'll still go. You might not go to that person, but you'll go to a, a different line or a different McDonald's and still order your burger. So don't let the devil stop you from coming to church. Believe me, here we love everyone, man. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. Doesn't matter your background. We love you. We honor you. And you are part of this family, and you can do ministry here in this church. And I, I, I can't wait to the day when some young people shocks me and says, does something like, whoa. I'm gonna have to, but see, I got to remember when I was young and say, hey, I might not agree with what they're doing or how they do it. It might not be my flavor, but guess what? They're still worshiping God. They're still using their talents for the Lord. I'd rather have them using their talents for God here at the altar of God than be out in the club, be out in the world doing that craziness out there. Give them a place here in the house of God to use their gifting and their talent, and we won't lose so many young people. So be thankful. So the Bible says don't cease. And the word cease in the Greek means don't stop or hinder the person. See, being thankful is not a one-time thing we do or just during the Thanksgiving season. But it, this is something we need to do year-round. We need to be thankful year-round. See, anyone who's done anything great for God has done it because someone around them was helping them achieve it. Nobody does anything great without a team. Dunamis Life can't do anything without a team. And we have a great team of people that are coming in. New people that have come in and say, you know what, I want to do something for God. And we find a place for them to serve. So if you're here and you say, Pastor, I, I, I need a place to serve, guess what? We'll find you a place. We'll find you a place to serve and do great things for God. This is a place where we're open to having you serve. It might not be what you want to do at the moment, but we'll find you a place. Because guess what? Serving is about the heart. It's not about what I want to do. It's about what is needed in the kingdom of God. And guess what? I'll humble myself and do things that I don't want to do so that one day God can trust me to do the things that I want to do. Because it's not about me. It's about the kingdom of God. Let me um, move on quickly here. Not only are we to be thankful for each other, but we're for to pray for one another. See, the Bible says to mention people to God in your prayers. 
In other words, you need to say, I thank God for, and you name them. And I ask that God will bless them, and you name their name. Be specific. I thank God for mm -mm, whoever that person is. I thank God for him. I thank God for her. And I pray that God will bless so-and-so, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, because they've been good to me. They've helped me. They've blessed me. I might not always agree with them, but I know they do what they do in love. To unity is so important in church. Without it, we can't conquer the kingdom of the enemy. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. This is why forgiveness is so important in the church. We need to learn to forgive one another. If someone has hurt you, you need to learn to forgive them and be thankful for them. So today, we're, we're going to be thankful for what the Lord is about to do. Because without forgiveness, the anointing cannot flow. We need forgiveness in the house. And whatever it is that the enemy is trying to bind you with, guess what? There's freedom in Jesus' name. There's freedom. No matter what spirit is trying to hold you down, no matter what circumstance is trying to hold you down, there is freedom in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask you all to stand with me. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm going to ask my tribe warrior prayer team to come up and get ready. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes with me for this moment. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube, if you're not driving, just close your eyes with me as well. We're going to go before the Lord. And we're going to experience miracles in this house today. There's going to be miracles. Every Sunday there's miracles. Every Sunday there's anointing in this house. And so today, I'm going to pray and then we're going to open this up and we're going to pray for you. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube, we're going to pray for you as well. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are thankful for all that you've done this year, 2022. And we want to finish this year strong. God, we know the enemy is out there to steal, kill, and destroy the believer but we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for those of us that need freedom, today there's going to be freedom. For those of us that need healing, today there's going to be healing. For those of us that need salvation, today there's going to be salvation. Whatever the miracle that is needed, we're giving thanks to you right now for it in advance. Because there's no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. And God, we are in your house where the anointing flows freely. The fire of God is here. And some of you may have been holding on some pain, some hurts. And the Lord wants you to release them. He wants you to release them so you can be set free and experience freedom in God. Some of you are being tortured by the enemy through dreams and through things you see in your house because doors have been opened. Well, today we're going to shut those doors by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. So if you're here today, you say, Pastor Rob, I want freedom. 
I want healing. I need deliverance. The enemy is attacking. I want to learn to be thankful. Then today is going to be your day. There's not a Sunday that's gone by that the miracle power of the Holy Spirit hasn't shown up. So if you're suffering today, you're suffering. The enemy has got a hold of you and you're suffering. God's about to set you free. Today's your day. You need salvation. Today's your day. If that's you here today, you say, Pastor Rob, that's me. I need prayer. Our tribe is ready to pray for you. I just want you to get up out of your seat. Come to one of them, and they're going to begin to pray for you. And you're going to experience a miracle of God today. You're going to experience what it is to walk in freedom. So right now, just get up out of your seat. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube, I'm going to pray for you in a moment. But those of you here in the sanctuary, don't think about it. Don't wait. Just come quickly. Because God's about to pour out. The anointing is moving right now. The anointing is moving right now. You might not understand what you're feeling. And that's okay. That's the Lord. He's, he's talking to you. He's dealing with you right now at this moment. You make your way. You make your way. We're thankful. We're thankful for you. We're thank you for this opportunity. Jesus, Jesus, just come on, come on, come on. Let them know you're there so they can pray with you. God is going to move. <laughs> Who else? Come on. Come on. Who else? Jesus. If you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, say, Pastor Rob, I need prayer. I need freedom. Then type in the word freedom. Type in the word freedom in the comment section, and we're going to pray with you. Type in the word freedom. We'll pray with you. There is freedom in Jesus' name. Don't leave this place the same way you came. Don't leave the same way you came. I see you, Maya, typing in freedom. We're going to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Maya, God. We pray for freedom over her life. Holy Spirit, right there. Those that have hurt her, those that have caused her pain, I pray for forgiveness to flow through her. That she's able to forgive those who have done her wrong. God, because you are growing something inside of her and an anointing. A supernatural faith. A miracle power. But the enemy is trying to block it with unforgiveness. So I pray that she's able to forgive those who have wronged her. Those who have spoke evil of her. God, you are about to do a work in Maya. So I pray right now, touch her. Right where she's at. Touch her. Break through into her life. 
I bless her right now, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Holy Spirit, fall fresh. Just allow the Spirit to minister to you now, Maya. Allow the Spirit to minister to you because that's the Lord. He's going to do the miracle. He's going to do the miracle. Your life is going to change in that area of unforgiveness because there's an anointing that's going to replace that pain. And you're going to experience it right now in Jesus' name. Fire fall fresh on her. 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 Let her hands feel the heat of the Lord, the heat of the Spirit. Let her hands right now feel the warmth of the fire that is flowing through her. God, touch Maya right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name.
because you're trying to compare yourself to others. And it seems like you're not measuring up. The enemy is attacking your mind with this low self-esteem. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not worthy. I'll never make it. Things will never change. And he's been attacking your mind, the stronghold. God wants to deliver you today of low self-esteem issues. There's a root in there. A root. You try to hide it with a mask. But there's a root of a trauma situation. A traumatic experience has caused you to see yourself in a different light. And that's why you've been experiencing this low self-esteem. But today, God wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you. If that's you here today, then come and meet me right here. I want to pray with you. If you're online, just write self-esteem. Write self-esteem. God is going to heal you right now. 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 You are a child of God. And the lies of the enemy that have been filling your mind because of what took place many years ago and it's been in you and you are not able to forgive because nobody understands, nobody knows. You kept it silent. And it's been eating away at you. But the Lord says today, you shall be free. What you see in the mirror, the enemy has shown you a broken mirror. You look at it and it's broken. And you don't like what you see. You don't feel like you measure up. You feel like you've been failing. But the Lord says no. That's a lie of the enemy. Because once forgiveness enters in, you're going to see how valuable you are. How worthy you are. You're going to see how beautiful you are in the eyes of the Lord, that you are not to settle for less. You're not to settle for what the enemy has brought to you because there's going to be healing, this spirit that attacks you at night, this spirit that attacks you at night. <laughs>